Hi, this is Kylie. Today we're going to talk about working from home when you have distractions. So we work from home and we also unschool our son, Drew. <laughs> this is Drew, who is, as you might can guess, a little bit distracting from time to time. This is a very famous squid noise. <laughs> So one way to work from home when you have a lot of distractions is to set really good boundaries, which I'm about to do. Hey, Drew, go to your room, please. I see your sign. <laughs> Another way to work from home when you have distractions is to make a sign. I made you a sign. It says, I'm working right now. Please bugger off. I love you. So your sign can say whatever you want it to say, but it needs to convey the general idea of I'm busy right now. I need you to go away. Politely or impolitely, however you feel. The, the thing we're going to keep coming back to here is boundaries. You have to set really good boundaries and you have to hold really good boundaries when you work from home because you are working in your living space. And that changes the game a little bit. You know, people come to your door at home that don't really bug you in an office and you have the temptation of your kitchen right beside you that you don't have in an office. You know, like, oh, I think I'll go and look in the fridge for the hundred millionth time, <laughs> even if you're not hungry. And you have the comforts of home, which is one of the nice things about working from home, but it's also one of the dangerous things. So another way to handle distractions at home is to have some structure. We have a really structured day where Pace works at her day job in the mornings and that's my time to run errands or hang out with friends or be with Drew or whatever. And then she comes home, we have lunch, where we talk about mostly video games and what we're gonna do for the rest of the day. And then we start our work day. And from, you know, one thirty to 2 to 6 is work time. Drew knows we're working. He can ask questions or interrupt us if there is something really important, and there's a whole another post on how we arranged an agreement that works well for all of us. And otherwise, he knows to, to leave us alone, and we do various other things, like we don't check our email more than twice a day. We check it at the beginning of our day to see if there's anything that needs to be done, and then we check it again at the end of the day, and that's it. We don't check Twitter or Facebook more than twice a day, same time. We check it when we check our email and that's it. And setting that kind of structure keeps you from getting pulled in because again, when you're at home, you're sitting on the couch, oh, well, let me check Facebook for just a couple minutes and then you've lost half your day. I know, Facebook is a time suck. <laughs> So you have to have some structure, you have to have some self-discipline because it is tempting to spend an entire day fooling around on the internet and the internet is a very big place. You could lose a whole day or a month. So not that that's ever happened to me. Of course not. So you have to be really, really careful and really guard your time. One, another thing that we do is put up intentional distractions, positive distractions, like posters that tell you what your goals are, a list of things to do. I have a notebook that's over there on the table <laughs> with my list of goals for the day, and so I can scratch through them when I'm done, and that way I know, okay, am I staying on track, am I staying focused, because if I'm getting my stuff done through the day, then yes, I am. If not, then there's something going on. So having boundaries, holding boundaries with the people in your environment, whether it's your kids or your spouse or your roommate or whatever, turning off your other distractions, Twitter, Facebook, the internet in general, your email, your phone, silence your cell phone. It's, it's just like I, I talk about this constantly when we talk about writing. When you're writing, you have to write, and that's all you can do. Because we think we can multitask, but we really can't. We focus on one thing at a time. So don't fall into that myth of multitasking. Get rid of as many of your distractions as you possibly can. Make a little sign, put it somewhere, and really keep in contact with, keep in connection with your goals. Stay 
stay connected to your goals because knowing what your goals are will help remind you what you're doing this for in the first place and that will help you stay a little bit more focused. I would love to hear from you to know what your distractions are and how you deal with them and I look forward to talking to you next time. Mwah!